Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, I want to take a look at some strategies for creating galleries in Edge Animate. Now, I've got five different galleries that I've created, and if I test the film here, test the project, you'll see these are my different galleries, and they all kind of work in the same in certain ways and different in others. So, let's take a look at the first one. So, for the very first one, I decided that I would make a quick um, gallery using the same technique that I use to show each of the galleries and that is just by hiding and showing all the different ones. First I'm going to just set all the text for all the buttons that I've created and then I'm just going to hide all the different galleries and then when I click on a uh, particular gallery like here's gallery one button I'm going to show only the gallery that I want and make sure that I hide all the other ones. Now if they're already hidden it doesn't really matter just um, keep some hidden. Then what I'm going to do is play the gallery one, the whatever gallery that I'm showing I'm also going to play it from the beginning just in case it has some sort of animation. So if I look at my first gallery um, it just has an animation actually it doesn't have any animation at all and I don't know why I have a, a stop because I really don't need that. It's not even animating. Ha! Ah, there you go. So even though I say play it from zero, um, it's probably not going to do anything. Now what I've got here are three different items, uh, three different images, and I've got them all ready on the timeline. And each one is right underneath each other, already set with their exact size and everything else. And it's very important that you realize to to bring in images at 100% size, don't scale them in Edge Animate, make sure that they're brought in at exactly the way that you want them to be used. So I've got my three thumbnails here, and with the three thumbnails I do the exact same thing that I did with uh, the different um, major symbols, and that is I show the m large image that I need to, to show, and that's GH4 sample dash image one, and you'll see the name there and you'll also see the name down here so we need that name to match and so I hide I show that one and I hide the others so on the next one I do the same thing I hide one and three and I show two and on the last one I do well you probably guessed what I do so it actually works quite well because all you're doing is showing and hiding the different symbols. Super easy to do. Now there are other methods for doing this. If I look at gallery 2, here what I've got going on is I use buttons above to change the background image of the gallery image with CSS. So here I only have one image and this image is a div right now which is very important. If I look at my code here, what I'm doing is I'm using that gallery image so I'm, I'm making sure that I'm pointing to that particular element and I'm changing the background Im, um, image to a URL and that URL has to match um, something that I brought in from my images and it's really just these the names of these files that we have here now it'd be really cool if you could just uh, select them and copy the name but you can show and explore and actually see the elements that are in your images folder. So that's how you link to them, by the way, images forward slash and then the name of that file. And all I'm doing on each of these is just changing them to a different image. So it's really easy to do. There's number three must be that one, yeah. Background image, URL images, and then whatever image that it is. Now with gallery number three. I'm doing something a little bit different here. I'm fading them in from the beginning just because that's kind of cool. Um, and if I take a look at this, I've got the same thing with, with the gallery image, but the difference is that I've com come up here and instead of this being a div, I've called it an actual image since that what that's what it is. So now what I can do is I can use CSS to change the attribute for source, so that's dot attribute source, and then I can point that to the image instead of using a background image with a URL. So it's just a slightly different way of doing it, 
but another very simple way of creating a very effective um, uh, gallery. Now for the next one, 4 and 5, I've decided to get a little bit fancier. And here what I've got is basically just an animated timeline with a bunch of stops. And then I've got some arrows in here. And on these arrows, on this particular one, which is my right hand arrow, I tell it to play. And on the left hand arrow, I tell it to play reverse when you click. The cool thing about it is that that means that this will come in and then it will continue to go. And I only have these three sections because I have three different um, uh, images. Now be aware of this though. For the one that is on the left, I don't want to see it. So I've set its display property to off until I get to the second image. Therefore, I can back up one time. I just don't want to back up again until I get to the beginning. I only want this to happen one time. So at this point from here to there, it's basically a loop that's happening. And I go forward and backward. Now when I get to the end here, you'll notice the image on the right disappears. And that's because I have a keyframe there for display off. And we have to have that on at the beginning. So pretty simple to create kind of a cool gallery and, and uh, use these. Now by the way, these images, these PNGs that I came in, uh, brought in have a background that extends way beyond the images and that's good for gallery images like this so that you can easily click on them. Gallery 5, same sort of thing I, trans I have a transition in and then I have a place here that I say restart and what this does is it goes forward just like before I can go forward and backward with these arrows but then when I get to the very end if I press on the button at this point what I want it to do is actually it will play forward here boom, and it will jump back to that particular element so therefore I'm actually looping back to this point the only problem is, is that without making a new symbol for this left arrow I can't click on that to go back to the end of the timeline so somewhat inelegant but it does work so here's the different versions. This one uses um, just show and hide. The second one uses CSS to change the background image URL. This one changes the image source, which works. Gallery number four allows me to just kind of move forward and backward, which I think is a pretty elegant solution. With only three images, it's not great but you kind of get the point. Well, it looks like I'm only getting the two right now so I might have some mistake. And gallery number five, here we go forward. So it can feel like at least we can go in one direction for a while. The only problem is sometimes we can't back up. So that might be something that we would have to work at trying to change. And I'm sure that this is just the beginning of different ways to create galleries in Edge Animate, but um, I especially thought the CSS ones were pretty simple um, and very effective, as well as the just show and hide. That's an old technique, but it works very, very effectively. And uh, I hope you uh, find this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.